Let's talk about face masks. I'll be going over five different types of oxygen masks. I want you to be able to identify them. Shortly after, I'll be going over a quick review. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. This is a trach collar mask. The trach collar mask is categorized through an aerosol method that is attached to the patient's tracheostomy and adjusted to fit accordingly. The trach collar is connected to a wide bore tubing that receives aerosolized oxygen from an oxygen source such as a jet nebulizer. Some disadvantages with a trach collar, it can put unnecessary weight on the tracheostomy tube, causing injury and stress to the site. An advantage to the source of oxygen delivery is it offers high humidity. Some reasons for use are for your patients that need relief of an airway obstruction or is great for weaning patients off the ventilator. This is a Venturi mask. With a Venturi mask, always ensure that the flow rate of oxygen is set at the prescribed amount specified on the Venturi valve for the desired FiO2. This delivery of oxygen is precise because it delivers a high accurate amount of oxygen through a fixed colored orifice that is set at a specific amount of oxygen that will be listed on the fixed orifice per the manufacturer guidelines. So some reasons for use are for your patients with CO2 retention such as COPD. If you want a demo on how to assemble a Venturi mask, be sure to watch my short for a quick demo. I'll include on the link on the description below. This is a face tent. This face tent falls under the aerosol method category that offers high humidity that allows for gas to be cooled or heated with delivery through a tent. It is attached to a wide bore tubing. A disadvantage of this type of face tent is it allows for condensate to collect in the tubing, so it requires more maintenance on the provider and or patient for delivery of oxygen. Some reasons for use for a face tent are for your patients that may have had a traumatic facial injury like a broken nose or facial burns and cannot tolerate a tight confining mask to the face or could be claustrophobic. This is a non-rebreather mask. With a non-rebreather mask, always make sure the mask fits securely and that the one-way valves are secure and functioning. It's important to understand that this mask excludes room air and if the valve is malfunctioned, it can suffocate an unconscious patient because it builds up carbon dioxide. How this mask works, it has a one-way inspiratory valve that opens during the inhalation and moves oxygen from a reservoir bag into the mask. So on exhalation, gas will escape through the mask from the one-way expiratory valve and enter room air. So the patient breathes gas specifically from the bag. So it's important to keep the reservoir bag from twisting and kinking and away from linen or bed covers to work adequately. Some reasons for use are for your patients with traumatic injury to the lungs such as cystic fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis, and can be used for patients with cluster headaches. This is a simple mask. A simple mask can deliver 35% to 50% oxygen with an appropriate flow rate of about six to 10 liters per minute. I call this your quick go-to oxygen for patients that have sudden chest pain, dizziness, or your patients right out of surgery from post anesthesia care unit, what we call PACIO. So here's the key tip. For your patients that have sunken cheeks or are on the slimmer side to secure that airtight seal, you wanna tape some gauze pads to the mask over the cheeks to ensure an airtight seal. Without this adequate seal, room air will enter and dilute the oxygen and prevent delivery of the prescribed oxygen concentration. So the disadvantage of this mask, it can be confining for the patient by irritating the patient's skin and interfere with talking and eating because it requires an airtight seal. So it is not ideal for long-term use. And thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.